Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about GitHub with Eclipse. GitHub is a popular website for sharing projects using the Git version control system. It's uh, mainly used for open source projects, but you can also use closed source if you pay. Now, before going there, I will just tell you a little bit about what is Git and how does it um, differs from older version control systems. So traditionally, uh, we have used these centralized version control systems like Subversion, where your code in your working directory is just committed to a remote repository. And it's a, it's a centralized server that has a copy of all the code. And then uh, when you want to get the latest changes that somebody else has done, you do the update operation. So it's, it's fairly simple. Of course, there, is, um, there are things like um, conflict resolution and merging and so on, but uh, that's just the details. The basic operation is simple. Now, Git is a little bit more complex. It's a so-called distributed version control system, so it has more components. There is also a working directory, but there is also a local repository and remote repository, which could be in GitHub, for example. Now, local repository is a copy. It's a clone of the remote repository. So when you do changes to your code in your working directory, in your project folder, you first commit those changes to the local repository. At that time, they are not available yet for other programmers because they are just locally committed. Now, if you want to make those changes available to the remote repository, you do the push operation. And then when you want to get changes done by other developers, you do fetch. And there is also one operation called pull, which is basically fetch plus update the working directory from the local repository. So it's a little bit more complex. But the advantage of this one is that if the server goes down, if the remote repository goes down, the chances that somebody will have the latest code in their local repository is high, so you can easily recover your lost server. So it's, uh, the code is distributed between a lot of programmers to their re remote rep uh, from remote repository to their local repositories. So, but the thing is that when you do programming with Git, when you share code with Git, you always have to remember these operations, commit and push, and then either pull or just fetch. Now, this is the GitHub website. I've already logged in, so you should create account and log in to get the same view. And first I'm going to create a new repository, a remote repository here. Um, we give it a name, say hello git, I was using that name before, so let's use it again. Um, by default it's public, if you want to do a private repository so nobody else can access it, unless you give, uh, give access to somebody, then you have to pay. And I'm going to initialize this repository with a readme file, which means that it's already kind of a project and you can then download, you can clone that repository to your local repository easily. If you don't do this, then you have to do um, another way of adding your project. You basically have to create local repository and then add it to the remote. But this way we just clone it. And gitignore is very useful if you know the programming language that you're going to use. Say, um, say we use Java. Then it will ignore all the class files and other binary files that are not really needed in the repository. Okay, now that we are done, let's just create it. And after a moment, hopefully the GitHub website will tell us that everything is okay. And we have already two files here, the GT ignore and git ignore and the readme file that were created. And other files will appear here when we add them, when we commit them and push them. Okay, but let me take a break. I'm creating a simple Java project that we can work on. Okay, now I have here Eclipse with a simple Java project that has only one file, hello git. And the file has main method that says hello git. Now, before sharing the project, I'm going to create a local repository. Basically, I'm going to clone the remote repository that we just made and make it local on this computer. But uh, before that, I'm configuring a couple of things. So if you go to preferences in Eclipse, team, git, and configuration, you can see some uh, key value pairs that you can assign. There are two important things you should do. User.name, that's your name, um, which is used when you commit the code so other developers can see who did it. 
and another one is user.email so email address for yourself so these two are kind of a must do whenever you commit so define at least these there are other options too you can read tutorials for more I'm going to just use an old spam email address here of course when you work on a real project you are support you should probably put your real email address okay but those ones are now set um, and now I'm going to open a new view here go to show view other git repositories and this is very useful because it allows you to browse repositories and work on them right now there are none so we need to add uh, there are three things to add we can clone a remote repository we can add an existing local git repository so if you have it on your computer but not in Eclipse you can add it here to this view or you can create completely new local repository but we will clone the one that we created at the github and this is the um, place where we're supposed to put the URL to our repository so let's go back to the website and you can see here we have the URL and this is the URL that if you want to share your code just give this one to your friends to your colleagues and they can access your code so we are going to just paste it here and Eclipse is automatically extracting these details just make sure that they are correct and then we use the username and password for the github okay it's going to find a master branch in the repository and then it suggests something called remote name now this is the name of the remote repository that we will use okay it's automatically its origin this is kind of a de facto name that is typically used uh, but then we just finish it will get the code to the local repository and you can see now that we have one repository here um, there are some interesting things there is the working directory where the code will be handled now this is at demo git uh, home demo git hello git so this is where the repository code is all the repositories are typically in your home folder in the git uh, folder it has a folder for git data and also these two files that were created by the github ignore file and readme file um, another thing that are interest for us are these branches there is the master branch that is in the local repository and the origin branch which is in the remote repository you can see these hash codes here they are now identical it means that they are cloned if we change one of them uh, basically we change the local one um, their hash codes will be different we'll see that in a moment okay but now how do we share this project to this repository at the moment as you can see this is at home demo git and this project is at at workspace uh, I have a test workspace with the hello git project so they are in a different location but uh, the easiest way to share it is to right click team share project and it will suggest here the repository that we just created you can also create a new one if you don't have it um, and it will basically move the project to this folder now and you can see that this little bracket icon appeared it means that we have changes that have not been committed yet to the repository but you can see that the project has now moved to this place it has moved inside the git folder and now we can right click team and commit so remember from here commit is the first operation where we move from working directory to the local repository and the next step is to push so let's go we first commit commit those changes let's say committed hello git project and you can see that this your name and the uh, email that we configured they are automatically added here if you don't use them uh, net, uh, Eclipse is probably going to try to detect them based on your computer name and so on and your username but uh, you can just define them and, and they will be correct then you check what you want to commit you see there are no binary files here now you can either commit or commit and push so it does the two things at the same time but let's do one step at a time 
first commit. Now you can see the bracket icon up disappeared, so we do not have any changes. If we add a new line here, even a comment. Okay, now what happens here is that this I opened this file, but it's in the old directory in the old directory. So we should actually close it before we start modifying. And now double click. Okay, you can see now the file has been changed again. So we can commit again. Whenever we change, have whenever we have uh, done working on the changes, we can commit them. Okay, and then at the end of the day, when everything seems okay, our local repository has the latest code we have committed. You can see that the hash code is now different between these two because they are not identical anymore. Master is different than um, the origin master. Now, what we must do is we must push the changes from the local repository to the remote. We can either do it here, push branch, or we can also do it through this team menu. There is also the uh, push branch master. Um, but let's do it here for a change. So we can also push the branch here. It will be, uh, it will be pushed to the origin and the local branch that we push is master. It will ask for username and password for the GitHub. You can also, there is a check mark, you can do that check if, it, if you want it to store the password, but I don't want that myself. You can see that um, what has been done, what commits have been done and what will be now reflected to the server. And this is the um, repository rel. And one more time, okay, now you can see that the hash codes are identical, so the remote repository is in sync with the local repository. So now if we go back to the website, refresh, you can see the hello git folder here, the project folder is here, including our source code. So that's how you use GitHub to create a new repository and how you share a project to the repository. We'll see more details about the Git in a later tutorial. Thanks for watching.